Guys, this time we're gonna talk about something that a lot of you might think is a little elementary, but for the new guys, this might be the difference between you having a uh, okay experience with your first radio or two and possibly a great experience. You see, whether you've spent a couple of hundred dollars on this type of a radio or you spent $35 on this radio is this guy here, the rubber ducky antenna. And to get the best use out of your handheld radio or any radio for that matter, is to get rid of those limiting factors and get yourself a better antenna. But how do you do that when this is what you've got to work with on this end and this is what you've got to work with on the other end? Well, they got these little things called adapters, and that is what we're talking about this time on K6UDA Radio. So mainly for the new guys out there, the guys that are studying for your test right now, the guys that probably just got your license and maybe you haven't even been on the radio yet, you're going to figure out soon enough that uh, the little antennas, the little rubber ducky antennas that come on almost every handheld radio that you could buy, whether it's the $35 radio or the $300 radio. Most of you guys, if you haven't already figured it out, uh, these things are the limiting factor on every handheld. The quicker you learn that when at least you're at home, if you could get that antenna outside, if you, can, if you could hook it up to a better antenna up on the roof, sitting on a cabinet, whatever, just get it off the radio, you're gonna do much, much better. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna have a whole new radio experience. Now the big question here is number one, how do you get it from that tiny little connector that's on the radio onto one of the more traditional connectors that you would see up on your roof or at a repeater site or even in your car. Well, those are called adapters and today we're gonna go through some of the different types of connectors that are pretty common in the ham radio world, uh, what they are, why they're used, and how to go from one to the other to the other and how easy it is to get all this stuff set up. Guys, before we get into this week's video, I wanna talk about our sponsor for the video this week, the Ridge Wallets. I don't care, everybody carries a wallet. If you're a man, a woman, a war dolphin, a two soul, everybody in our society carries a wallet. If you're like me, you've carried one of these things in your pocket for close to 50 years. And because I've carried this thing for over 50 years, I have back problems, my ass hurts. It is just no bueno. Well, the nice folks at the Ridge Wallets, they sent me this and this has changed my world. This thing carries more cash, more cards, more everything that I need to carry in a smaller form factor than I could carry in that traditional wallet and it slips right into my pocket. I get no, what I call butt fatigue. It just isn't there with this wallet. Plus, these wallets come in a ton of different designs, different metals, all kinds of very, very cool stuff. Uh, very, very well built. This is a burnt titanium and this one has uh, the little money clip on the back. These are RFID theft proof. You know what? It's like carrying a little Faraday cage in my pocket. Want something a little bit more exotic? I also got this one. This is the Damascus steel wallet. Very, very cool. Uh, the same material that a lot of the high-end, super, super high-end knives come in. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous finish on this. This one has uh, a little strap on the back. And guys, if you go to the ridge.com forward slash K6UDA, uh, you'll get an extra 10% off on any purchase you make there just because you know me. Now, 
let's get back to the video. There's a million ways to skin a cat and here's just a few to get you started. So let's start off with the most common connector on uh, handheld radios, the SMA. SMA connectors come in two flavors. The female, uh, most notably on most of the Japanese and higher end Chinese radios, and the males, which uh, generally come on the Bofang radios. These are the two types of mounts that you'll see on the antennas. The most straightforward way of doing this is to take the adapter you want to use and screw it directly onto the radio. Mounting your adapter on here does work, but it can put added strain on the antenna connection. So under a lot of circumstances, what I recommend using is called a strain relief. It's simply a piece of wire between the two adapter ends. SMA connectors in automotive applications are becoming increasingly popular. On my Jeep, I'm using an SMA enabled connection on the antenna mount. And on my side-by-side, -side, I've even got an SMA antenna mount uh, that is very flexible and I could snake it through the roll bar for the GPS unit and MERS radio combination. This small antenna line is ideal for going through firewalls, roll bars, and tight spaces. A big advantage to SMA connectors is the small size for the small radios. It fits really nicely through automotive and aircraft bulkhead connectors. It's a 50 ohm match. It works from uh, daylight to 110 gigahertz. They're very flexible and they secure nicely. Not that kind of bayonet. What we're talking about right here is the BNC connector, the uh, bayonet connector. These are another little 50 ohm connector, uh, most notably used in the filmmaking industry with cameras and stuff, high-end cameras and microphones. The BNC has been readily adapted by the ham radio community more uh, more or less in the QRP market like the uh, ICOM 705, the KX2, the KX3, a lot of other things like the Zygus. The reason the BNC connector is so popular with these types of radios is because it is not meant to be a permanent mount. These things uh, get taken apart and put back together all the time. Get in the field, you're gonna put it together, get done, you're gonna take it apart. So you need something that is durable that can handle lots and lots of assembly and disassembly. A real practical application for say the BNC to SMA adapter is to take your little handheld and plug it into something like a satellite antenna. These large Yagi antennas were never meant to be a permanent fixture on your handheld. That's why they use the BNC connectors so you can take them on and off. You can get BNC adapters in a million different configurations. Here's two right angle configurations that I have here on a tuner. So for the next connection, uh, we're going to head out to what will one day be Studio B. All right, now because the uh, cost of building materials is so high right now, and because I've got other things to do, I haven't really started on Studio B. I've got some of the pieces and parts in there, but let's go in there and let's talk about UHF connectors. Welcome to Studio B. This is where we're going to talk about UHF connectors, the most common type of connector in the ham radio world. These are meant as a semi-permanent type of an installation. Uh, they're extremely strong and they are res resistant to the elements. You'll commonly hear to them as referred to as PL259Ns or in this case the SO239, the female end. Now almost every base station ham radio and almost every 
uh, mobile installation is going to have SO239s terminating at the end or the, on the back of the unit. The reason for this is the uh, potentially high currents that can pass through, especially units running an amplifier. This is a Zygu amp for a QRP radio. Now the thicker coax and the UHF connections are used on, like I said, almost every mobile, including this little CB here that I've got in the Jeep. Now you also have to remember when you're working HF, you gotta have a thicker, heavier coax. Uh, the RG58 isn't gonna cut it, and the SMA stuff ain't gonna cut it. Okay guys, the final connector we're gonna talk about today is a DIN connector. And chances are you probably will never use one of these things. These are the professional connectors. They're made for uh, TV, radio, big, thick coax, ham radio repeaters. They use them a lot. The line they use is generally called a hard line. While you can get antennas and you can uh, adapt them, to back to say a PL259 and everything. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. It just is, these are them. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's show. I hope you maybe learned something. If it was a little too elementary for you, uh, well, pound sand. Anyway, if you haven't already hit that subscribe, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, uh, leave a comment, please leave a comment. The YouTube algorithm is ever changing, ever evolving, and uh, comments are a great way of letting YouTube know that you're engaged with uh, this ham radio content. And uh, even if you just say, hey, saw the video, thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't care, whatever. I uh, do read all the comments and I try to answer as many of them as I can. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.